Hello everybody, it's the Cinemat Haven here today, and uh, you can probably tell that uh, if you watch the 26A version 4 video, still wearing the same shirt, you can clearly tell this is recorded immediately after. I was thinking about it, you guys can laugh at this all you want, but I got Himmel's Dwarf, Siegfried Line, and Fisherman's Bay, all immediately after that 268 uh, version 4 video. So it's like, I got all the maps that would have been absolutely amazing to end up on for just fighting in a city. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, those would have been awesome to be able to fight in a city. Okay, we're, we're going to be changing things up a little bit today. We're going to be jumping in and actually looking at the crew and the way that the tank's built and then checking everything else out. So, the LT-432, this has got to be one of my favorite light tanks in the game, and I just absolutely love this thing. Against tier 8s, if you know the armor of your opponent, you can side scrape against them. Against 120s, some tier 9s you can side scrape. Some tier 10s you can side scrape against them as well. It uh, doesn't mean you want to rely on it because they can just put rounds straight through your turret because you only got 160, 140, 120. But, you see, the armor of this isn't what makes it so good. The, what makes the LT-432 so good... Oh, thank you for the silver bonus popping up. Is the fact that your still consumer is 316... With your moving 316, light tanks benefit from no moving concealment. They have still concealment, and it's the same across the board. Longer that, we're looking at 180 alpha with the gun, 300 mm, like 300 millimeters. Oh my gosh, that'd be outrageous on this tank. Uh, 300 damage on the high explosive with 444 millimeters of pen. 176 standard, and then 218 on your uh, premium rounds. However, uh, something I'm going to bring up real fast because I don't have it loaded up. Whatever you do, do not believe that your premium rounds are APCR, like they have them labeled here. In fact, they're actually an AP round for your premiums. So the, the part that makes me laugh at this is that APCR should have a fast shell velocity. Your standard rounds are 1,150. Your premiums are 1,012 with 700 uh, meters a second on your high explosives. So keep this in mind. You're not going to get any faster by loading premium inside this. Your standard rounds are the way to go. Um, other than that, terrain resistance, 0 0.9, uh, 1, and then 1.6. Absolutely amazing. 48 traverse speed. It is a light tank, 29.63 power to weight. And you weigh uh, 27,000. So this right here for kilograms, this is actually outrageous. It allows you to ram a lot of other light tanks inside the match without much of a problem. We got 20 reverse speed. 65 top speed, 10 rounds per minute, 6 second base reload. Honestly, I do not bolster this reload at all. Um, my crew, I don't even have rapid loading. I do have Boron Leader, though. So there is that. So jumping into this, let's go ahead and take a look at the commander on here. It's Becky Lynch. She is a crew trainer. That's all she does. So we got Situational Awareness. We got Six Sense. Uh, mark Target with super massive lighting effects in the background there. Green Thumb. So... One thing that I actually want to mention is Green Thumb, I don't find this to be a very effective perk. Um, it's very situational that Green Thumb is actually worth having on your tank. Uh, for instance, maps like Sand River. Uh, Sand River, there's not a lot of foliage around the map. It's extremely difficult unless you're camping at the base or you're taking the center of the map. Green Thumb plays against that. Uh, along with that, you also have Elamain. There's not a lot of foliage in Elamain. And then uh, Nominom, there's not exactly a lot of usable foliage on that map. Uh, along with Pearl River, Pearl River's got a lot more um, bushes around the map that you can kind of utilize. But overall, Green Thumb is just one of those perks that if you're taking it, you better use it. Because there's not a lot of maps that support this perk. However, Camouflage Expertise, this is beneficial on almost every single map just because it increases your concealment overall, along with the Camouflage Net. Born Leader, Off-Road Driving to help get a little bit of um, better terrain resistance. Uh, a couple of light tanks have got some pretty bad terrain resistance, so Off-Road Driving is really good to stack on top of that. Along with that, Track Mechanic, a must-have, in my opinion, on every single tank, no matter the situation. Unless you're a willed vehicle. If you're a willed vehicle, uh, please, for the life of you, don't use will mechanic. Use general mechanic. It's 5% less, but at least you can transfer it to another tank and still have a crew that's actually able to be moved anywhere that you really want it. So this is a joke. This is better. Other than that, let's go ahead and start jumping into some gameplay here, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in a second. So, Canis. I know I bombed the name. 
I know I bomb the name every single time. This map, yeah, I guess it's okay for light tanks. I'm actually going to show you guys a position I like to take in this map. It's over in E7. Uh, there's a position I really love to take right here, and I actually have never shown this off in the entire time I've been a creator, but this is a position that I actually use religiously inside my light tanks. So even without a gun rammer, we're using, I believe it's optics, camouflage net, and then ventilation. Honestly, if you're going to be playing light tanks, don't even worry about your reload. Primarily, if you can get shots and targets and you're using uh, what damage you have and you're throwing it every single once in a while, it's perfectly fine. Uh, the, the, the Panzerwagen, uh, the Panzerwagen, little party wagon, tier 10. I mean, if you bol bolstered a gun in that one, that's completely fine. The Manticore, on the other hand, it loves concealment. This position right here, I love it because of these bushes. Just, you got a whole group of four bushes right here. You can actually get in and get some really good spots. Early spots for the right side. We've already got two detected. We've got a Cobra. Bat chat. Not exactly a whole lot that you can do from this position, though, because you can't fire. You can fall back by using this bush, and if you knock down that tree prior to coming in here, you can use that tree to actually get fully around the rock here. If you get spotted, that is. However, this is going to be a really slow match. T30, we detected him. He's not going to cross freely. Beautiful. 529, 264 assist off that. The UDES got a little bit. Cobra's back in view. We detected him. Then again, a lot of passive scouting, you don't really see people uh, talk a whole lot about it. Because the gameplay is not exactly the most engaging for viewership. But it's something that you actually really want to cover. And we got detected because the bat chat pulled and we weren't fully covered by the rock. There's two. He's going to want to put a third into us, but he's not going to get it. A T-30 still over here somewhere. I really don't want him to pull on me. It is a tier 10 dominant match, though, so I do want to be a little bit careful. 821 assisted. There we go. Hello, T-30. How are you? Take it nice and slow. No point in pulling hard. I actually wonder. Uh, there's a couple of bushes right here. I don't know how effective they are, but we'll find out. Not good, not good, not good. Uh, grill. I actually believe the bat chat spotted us out right there. I guess one thing I can do is load some high explosives. Uh, also, I actually recommend everyone to take high explosives just because you're going to be able to do this. You can prep areas by knocking down trees that we can actually pull up. You don't see it utilized a whole lot. Very afraid of that grill that's on top. There he is. I wonder if I can pull up safely right here because the tree's in the way. No. Still cannot. I guess we're going to knock down that tree, too, and then hopefully uh, that'll be enough. And, nope, the bad chat's going to catch us out. Oh, the pain. Okay, so I swapped over to the Falcon. Honestly, the still concealment's not that much different. Um, the LT432's got 248. The Falcon's got 252. The crew's essentially built the same. The equipment is essentially the same. Uh, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to send it. However, I got nine perks in this crew rather than eight. Honestly, though, to be an effective scout, you really only need five perk slots to have, like, the ultimate scout. Because uh, primarily, you're going to be taking concealment... Um, six cents is a requirement. I don't even care what tank you're inside of. Six cents is a requirement because it'll let you know that you're spotted. That little detected icon that pops up, that means a gun is on you. So the exclamation point that you will see every once in a while. Another thing is on this map, this is actually one of the best trees to knock down. Because now you can come right here and you can sit right here. That light tank's going to pull and he's not going to spot us. And again, he's outside of our safety net. The safety net is actually on the mini-map. Take a look, we'll pull inside this bush right here and actually just sit straight inside the bush. Make sure it's completely covering us, and once we see that, we'll be fine. But right here, the safety net going around us, a little dotted line, that is your effective concealment. So people have to be usually within that to spot you out, but if they have really good crews, it'll be easy to detect you. Another thing is, whenever you're passive scouting, never lock on to an opponent. You always keep your gun away from them. That way they're not alerted to you aiming at them at all. 
it actually it really helps with this because when we aim at somebody it's going to give them a detected icon and that detected icon means that someone has line of sight and their gun is on you so for instance the bat chat that's hiding behind the buildings if we lock on to him while he's still behind the building it's going to play against us because he knows that he, we're aiming at him that we have him detected the gun must physically be on him so real fast we'll lock on to him for a split second we'll lock off you'll see he made a drastic turn because he got um, someone's gun gun aiming at him now that the gun is off you'll see a difference right here it's actually i feel a little bit safe that we can pull up their light tanks uh h5 so we're actually gonna try and make it to this push we're not gonna make it because the bat chat's there our safety net kind of played against us i was not thinking and i did a hard pull oh uh, all right we're gonna do this i actually have no high explosives inside this i'm very sad i've been wanting to change it for a long time but i've just never done it Spot a target hit, 216. Thank you. Pull back up into our little safety bush here. The mighty bush. That bat chat's going to try and make it to that backside there, but we're not going to let him. Let's take our gun off of him. Readjust a little bit here. Light tank's coming back. Let's pull all the way in the bush. So pulling all the way in the bush, if we have enough still concealment inside of a light tank... Um, it's almost a required proxy spot. And proxy spotting is within 15 meters of the target. So, you can keep that in mind. We're gonna do a little bit of pull-up right here. Actually, we're gonna pull in this bush. This is the Mighty Bosch, because it gives us a little bit better eyes. This backside here, because that tree's in the way. If I had a high explosive, I'd actually knock that tree down to the left. Uh, giving us a view of this area here. It's actually nice to see that the team for once is actually using my um, spotting. Because I've done this a couple of times and the team has never really utilized what I've given them. Be very careful of that light tank though. That bat chat still might be there. So one thing that we're going to do is um, rather than fully pulling in, we're going to pull up and stop. Light tank's coming in. Be prepared to jet. Nope, we're safe. We can make it to that bush, which we cannot, because we jumped in. Our safety net got uh, seen by the Centurion. AVRE. We're going to back off, do the same maneuver we did before. Do a little bit of backup here. It's really hard to get to that bush. I would love to. If you, if you were in a Vanguard, you'd make it there without a problem. But no, we're not in a Vanguard. Centurion's... It's nice to see if we can spot him out without much of an issue here. Do, 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 do. Take this match nice and slow. It is 14 to 8. We're definitely winning this, but I don't want to pull. Alright, no sudden movements. You cannot see if you don't move. It's like a T-Rex. No, the, the mighty small arms. Everyone fear me. Rawr. Okay. There, now I'm safe. The light tank's taken out. I'm actually going to back up and see if I can kill the Centurion Aviary. Wait for the bushes to go solid. And... No! Send another shell. Okay, I think we're good. I waited for the bush to go solid. It played against me. Uh... So, there's something I read a while back. Um, and I think it might be true. If you are within 50 meters of a bush when you fire, even whenever it's solid... Uh, the concealment values are actually lower than what they would be if you were 50 plus meters from the target. And uh, the more that I play, the more that I'm starting to believe that. Especially with a lot more that I've been playing inside light tanks. Let's see if we can get the uh, 2100 assist off this guy. Should be able to safely fire against him though. Nice, a little bit of extra assist there. And the best part about this, and one thing that I would love to share, I've done 3,143 spot assist, okay? And I've only done 295 damage. And you want to know the number one thing that stands out to me about these kind of plays and the players that you see doing this? Well, I'll show you in a second. However, today's not exactly been the greatest day. It's late night. Uh, <laughs> the version 4 played against me. 
Epic victory. We're not going to be on the top 10 list because a lot of the other guys did a lot more damage. We only have 3,143 assists with 295 damage dealt, but we made a really good amount of silver. We assisted the team. We played our role valiantly as a tier 8, slowly pulling in. A um, couple of misplays. I should have really tried to keep better track of what was going on. But here, we'll jump over to Watch Stars real fast. Now, the best thing about this is that we did 3,143 assists, yet we only got 498 WN8. Not to mention, we did 1,409 assists inside of the LT432 with only 190 damage dealt, yet we got labeled as 13 WN8. WN8 is not accounted for assist. It never has been and it never will be from the sounds of things. So personally, you see someone who has like a massive amount of assist, but they have like the worst, absolute worst things you've ever seen. It, in my opinion, assist should have some WN8 value because rewarding people for playing as assist and that they're supporting their team, yet you can get 10,000 assists, deal zero damage, and guess what? You're going to end up with zero W and 8. So early match, this is uh, L... El Haloof. I love El Haloof. Uh, this bush position right here is really good to take because you're going to have a lot of early scouts that like to pull. They like to fight out in the open. They like to play really aggressive. So your best choice is actually to come right here. The next match, we're actually going to go ahead and pull back out in the LT432. And go from there. You can see the aggressive scout plays going on right now. And there's no point in being aggressive. You just want to take your time and use your environment. Let's actually angle a little bit right here and get better um, better inside the mighty bushes. Spotted out the Hawk 12 coming up. And then the MX Chaffee still doesn't know that we're here, but we're still spotting him. But he cannot see us because we are passive. As I say that, the Agel pulls around. And now we're spotted. Now the Agel's got 410 meters of view range. So it does kind of play with it. As I play like a Muppet. I'm probably going to get taken out really early this game because we did get spotted. Avoid the auto lock because the auto lock in close quarters combat with this always plays against you. And totally fine getting caught out like that. That sucks. Kasserine. Not a bad map. Um, one of my best, like, a position I prefer to go to for scouting would actually be D4. However, if you have no one heading over to the T-Bone Trench right here up in the top section, this is a good position too because he's got everyone out coming over here on the right side. Uh, D4 for me, just scouting down there. It's a little bit of extra assist early game and then you rotate around the right side. And this is one of the maps that's probably one of the best examples of green thumb not being as beneficial. Because uh, can you guys think of any bushes around the map that are usable? I can think of a couple, but they're all inside of the trench, going all along this trench, and they play against you. Because they're easy, they're known, a blind fire or two, and you're basically out of the game. However, there's a couple of really small bushes up here on D4 that you can actually use. We've I've tested it, you can actually use these as um, concealment. This is something that not a lot of people know about. These two little bushes right here actually work to conceal you. So you pull up, you gotta watch out for your right side though, but everything in front of you, because these bushes are actually in the way, uh, we actually tried this putting a light tank right there at 146 meters, and we were concealed until we took a left and pulled around them. They're small, but they work. That's all that matters. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the premium spool, get that enhanced view range. So if we can spot anything else out down here. Light tank pulling up. We're going to back up. We want to use this little bit of a mound here to where we can still see the uh, US-15, but the light tank's not going to be able to see us if he pulls on us. A better pull here. I do believe uh, you can get mild concealment from these pulling up on the left, but it's not... Yeah, it's not guaranteed. Depending on the light tank that you're in, you can do it, though. Like a Vanguard, not much of a problem right there. Three hundred and eighteen assists so far, perfectly fine. Let's actually go for uh, no overmatching that. I do believe that's a uh, thirty millimeters, maybe twenty on the back of the two five seven. Not a hundred percent sure, but it is what it is. 
lot of the light tankery pulling up on us. We're actually just going to go ahead and do a peekaboo scout here and then back off. We'll then we'll see anything. We've got some heavies down low right here, so I think it's time to back off and then relocate. 698 assist. I actually wonder if I should stay right here. Provide the view range and hope that no one is going to be suppressing those two heavies. So I guess it's time for me to pull off and then head back in the mid. And pull up on the back section there to keep them spotted out because they're gone now. And there's moments where a lot of light tank players would probably pull the hill directly to keep them detected. But it's always best to back off to keep constant sight. Like right here, we should be in a safety net here in about two seconds. We're going to pull right here instead. Because they don't have a whole lot of area that they can travel through. Uh, more than likely, they did drop down to the ditch to pull back around. If that's what they're planning. The T-49 is heading where we just were with this big derp gun. Not going to give them the opportunity to use that big derp gun on us. Because we backed off. He does 15, 16. AP round traveling from there. Right side of that rock. 10 to 14. Not exactly looking like a really good match right now. 8 to 14. Stuff is falling apart. Left side got pushed really hard, even though they had a lot of early spots. And that's what really sucks. So you can get all the early spots you want, but unless your team is there to actually utilize it, it's not going to count. Centurion AX. I've seen a lot more of those starting to pop up. Is there a way that we can bring this back? Maybe. But the chances are very low. Uh, 6 to 13. I mean, there's still a chance. These guys are decently hauled down, but it's going to fall apart real quick. Actually, let's see if we can use some side scraping maneuvers against that AX. I'm not spotting anything out on the left side here. There's some heat rounds flying from him, so side scraping is uh, off for sure. A little itty bitty light tank behind us if we actually just get in front of him here. Make our armor a little bit harder to pin. There we go. Going for a little bit of a ram. There we go. Got a medium pulling up behind us. A low AVRE. We all love you. Can I actually want to get away from the AVRE? Oh, it's last man standing. Uh-oh. This is not good. Uh, T-49 derp gun. I really don't want to deal with that. Good job, that's my tracks. T-49! Ah, the derp gun! <laughs> so I thought about it. After the last match, I actually want to mention that mediums can essentially perform the same task as long as their concealment is under 268. You can essentially pull off light tank concealment inside some mediums as long as you have 268 or lower. Some people may be wondering... Why I chose the Lance and C over the Dragon, and the main reason why is because the Dragon can only achieve 271, while the Lance and C can do 262. And the extra 9 meters, you'll be surprised at how big of a difference an extra 9 meters can make. Because that's 9 meters overall. That's not like a percentage base where it's going to be like effective 3, effective 2. No, like testing this inside bushes, the Lance and C gets caught out at like 178. While the dragon gets caught out at like 200. It's a big difference with that 9 meters of extra concealment. Not to mention decent power to weight. Then you're 105. It's decent at 320 damage. Um, honestly, I would pull up the statistics of this tank to be able to tell you guys what they are. But believe me whenever I say this, I prefer the Lance and C over the dragon any day. Just because of the concealment advantage that the tank offers. Don't get me wrong. The 480 Hesh round that the Dragon offers, it may be devastating, 
but it's Hesh, and it's not always guaranteed, not to mention your standard rounds. It's 236 penetration, while this one is, uh, 242 on your APCR premium round. I missed a tree. Oh, I cannot hit that tree for the life of me. Oh my gosh. I can never hit this thing with a high explosive. I always over-aim it. This tree right here, though, if you come to it, this is just a heads up and we're taking this flank. Knock it down a little bit to the right. Now you have a little bit of a safety net to scout from up here, drop down, pull into there, and then rotate around. Okay. Well, let's. We're, we're doing scout things, so let's go do scout things. T30 off in the distance there. He's down. I did not mean to pull the trigger there, but I guess I did. MX30B. A, a premature fire there. Should have led that a little more. You guys can probably tell I am not <laughs> having the greatest experience right now. Not to mention, this match is going by way fast. And I'm not going to be getting a whole lot of assist either because everyone's pushing in super quick too. Alright, back to some light tank action. I guess we'll do the mediums on another day. That match, everyone rushed in. It went by way too quick. And the enemy team did not send anyone on the left side. So the entire left side fell apart really fast. So we're not going to include that match or the rest of it. But I'll show off that tree spot. Tree spot's totally fine. Um... Another thing about light tanks that I want to mention that not a lot of people even think about, like the effectiveness of a light tank by simply detecting and aiming your gun at a target. For instance, airfield here, I'm not expecting a whole lot of assistance damage, but what I am expecting is to prevent people from pulling right here. That's the goal. Prevent them from pulling because if they're spotted, they're less likely to try and perform a flank in your team which is going to allow your team to work the inside ridge here, the rocky pass on airfield, and uh, it's better plays. And it's honestly, just a, it's a way smarter decision just to essentially passive scout and occasionally throw out a shell, but don't land it. Kind of like you land near the target, but you're not actually trying to hit the target directly. Our safety net should be playing with us right here. And then a lot of people that are going to be pulling in this side, they're going to be getting spotted. And then they're not going to want to try and do a flank play. Uh, I think we can do that. I do kind of want to try out our this position right here. Get into it correctly. We should be okay. The thing is, if a tree's not knocked down, you do not benefit from any concealment from it, which is really dumb. So trees have to be knocked down to benefit from any concealment from them, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I guess we'll send out some damage. Ouch. That was a big boy round. Heat round coming from a Udez. That's always lovely. Guess this might be another match that goes by really quick. Ooh, maybe a little bit too much lead in that lichen. Let's go for tracks in that. And then we have the Udez aiming at us again. Hello, LTV. How are you today? Hopefully you're doing fine. Let's have a gentleman's battle. My 306 hit points against your 1031. And, uh, it may not work out too well in my favor, but we'll give it a try. As he puts a shell into our uh, turret. Yep, straight into the side of the turret there. Come on, I'm by myself. Don't leave me alone. It's not that bad, is it? Uh, his gamertag is newbie, so I, I guess maybe. <laughs> There we go, a little bit of bounce. 
Gotta say, this is another thing about the LT-432 that I absolutely love, is just the fact that you have enough armor to really pull on people, and then they easy at loading the high explosives now. Come on, this is just like miniature medium combat LTB. I got hatches, you can aim for them. Ah, the Ferdinand. Yeah, not all light tank gameplay requires you to constantly jump up to support the team. Sometimes it can be a simple pull around a corner, spot a target, spot a target, sorry for my slanguage there, but spot a target because it makes them hesitate on trying to make a push or take any push at that matter. Yes, trees are dumb. You have to knock them down to benefit from them. Yeah, so yeah, if you guys are wondering why you got spotted through like all these trees that are standing, if they're standing up and you're in the way of them, they work. But a lot of these smaller trees, it's like they see the very bottom of your tracks and like, there's a tank there. Hello, Dreadnought. Hello, Lycan. Who do I want to shoot at? Oh, was I spotted? <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. I didn't hear it go off. <laughs> okay. I, I thought I was safe there. It was my commander dead. I have no idea. Um, okay. But yeah, to give you guys a rundown of like light tank gameplay, you don't, you know, don't stress out on your light tanks that aren't getting the spots because a lot of the time we have a lot of active scouting rather than passive scouting. There's a lot more active scouting in the game than there is passive scouting just because all the videos that show it off, everyone wants to do damage. A lot of people who are playing light tanks primarily focus on light tanks for the WNA increase. And the example I can give on that would actually be the Agel, the Hawk 30. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go tier 8, light tank, we're going to go Hawk 30. There we go, we're going to scroll down. And then in the past, the last couple times I played it on 3 one, uh, 23, and then on the 26th of last month, so on the 1st of this month and then on the 26th of last month, I played a total of five matches and maintained an 8,000 WNA across the board, um, only averaging 2,679 and then 3,305 damage with not a whole lot of assistance on those days. Just because light tanks, for whatever reason, have a massive increase to what they can earn inside of W8. So a lot of the time, people playing light tanks, they're farming W8, and to me, I hate farming W8 just because it doesn't show off what I'm actually capable of. My my perspective is we can go last 30 days inside some of my light tanks. Is um, you'll see the 8,500 across the board here inside the Egal of only five matches played. I played 61 matches inside of my LT432 because I'm testing out concealment and trying to get a ton of maps down and learn some positions to help out with that. And then I have a couple of recordings I'll be able to show them off. However, today, the um, T92 on Prokhorovka, you guys actually saw one of the strategies I used in that map. Uh, other than that, the Vanguard, I played a couple of matches. And for some reason, I'm doing worse in my Vanguard than I am inside of my T92. Whenever it comes down to assist damage-wise... The assist 16 to uh, 1,700. Assist is actually really difficult because you got to know the maps that you're jumping on and playing on. But it is what it is. We can remove the 30-day icon and go all time for light tanks inside tier 8. And then across the board, the uh, LTTB. I only played two matches inside the tank because I did free XP the tier 10 for comp because uh, originally I wasn't a big light tank fan at the time. But the matches I played inside the tank, I think it's an amazing tank. Last time I played it was... Uh, Two years ago. I guess I should play this tank. That was in 2021. I guess um, next time we do a light tank video, I'll be inside the LTTB. Uh, other than that, you guys. Yeah. And then the Becky Lynch. I don't play this tank a whole lot. Last time I played it was uh, last year. About four months ago. Average 6,400. Honestly, this is one of the tanks that uh, whenever it was broken, you had 8,000 DPM. Was the time that I played the crap out of it. I three marked it as well. Um, I'm number two in the world on it, and this is kind of the number one reason why I don't want to play the Sinlac is because I hit that number two slot, and I kind of don't want to get rid of it. So, I barely play this. I might do the Becky Lynch and just play that, because I only have 25 matches inside the Becky Lynch. <laughs> They're both the same tank. Um, the Becky Lynch and the Sinlac, however, they are not passive scouts. They're more active and slight passive than anything else. Scouting tanks, there's a big difference between them. 
ones that are under that 268 still concealment are fantastic for passive scouting, while all the others that are above the 268 range can perform a little bit of passive scouting, but they're better off being active scouts. So other than that, you guys, it was fantastic. Hopefully this was a bit informative for you guys. Uh, I know it was for me. Um, I don't use light tanks to farm W and 8. My goal instead of light tanks is to use them for concealment and spotting and trying to assist your team, even if it requires me to literally do nothing the entire match and like barely do any damage, but prevent people from taking a flank and pushing. So... Hopefully, if you've been struggling with your light tanks, the information I give you guys today will help out. Other than that, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm out of here. It's time for me to go to bed. Tonight sucked, just like every single time I play in the night, because I don't play with anyone, and I'm all alone by myself, talking into a microphone, staring at a camera, pretending like I'm talking to the audience, but the only thing I have is my mater stuffed animal to keep me company. We both, had, we both had the same smile. Don't worry about it. Other than that, you guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for all the support you guys have been giving me over the past little bit. If you guys have any um, requests that you would like to make, leave a comment down in this video and let me know. Other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next one, uh, which probably will be on Sunday if you guys are catching this at the time it releases Sunday we're going to be doing the scrap metal news and going over a couple of things and talking about concealment doing some live gameplay uh, with me and Blade more than likely if he's on he's I haven't been able to get a hold of him that easily then again I've been staying up really late and being him up at, and we're 36 minutes in you guys have fun I'm out of here